Hey, welcome back to Religion Wing TV. I'm your host, Drew, and we sipping on all the spirituality we can. Why? Because my spiritual ears stay. Hey, guys, we're going to get right into the book of Zep Zephaniah and Haggai, okay? We have about five chapters to go. And uh, I do appreciate you returning back to my channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe, like, and share my videos and my channels. Give me those thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And um, let people know what Religion Wing TV is over here doing, okay? Um, also, we know people like to get up and read people to filth. However, we like to get up and read people to life. That's life more abundantly because we know... According to the book of John, book of John, that Christ is the door of the sheep. We are the sheep in this pasture called the world, the earth. And um, except we go through the door of the sheep to get back to God, um, we can't enter the kingdom of heaven. According to the book of John 14, verse chapter 14, verse 6, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And except a man come through him, they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Any other way, you're stealing and being a robber, and you're not going to make it, okay, if that's what you believe. So, we also know that people cannot physically see, they cannot read, and they also are abused and hurt by parents who are generally pastors, preachers, priests, prophetesses, and prophets in the church all looking to profit from the church and the people in the church furthermore deceiving the people and abusing the people and doing wicked things to hurt the people so we try to be the bridge to bring the word of god to the lost hurting soul and the lost hurting soul back to the word of god and we've been doing pretty good on this channel despite the fact that we have not reached our thousand uh, uh, subscribers don't think that we haven't helped a thousand people turn their life around to the truth, okay? So, getting right into the book of Zep Zephaniah, it is a pretty hectic political and religious history. Reforms comes from time to time. Zephaniah's forceful prophecy may be a factor in the reform that occurs during Josiah's reign. It's like a revival, something we need to see happen in this world today. That produces outward change. But I say you could dress a pig up all day long and put lipstick on it, a wig, Miss Piggy, and all that pretty clothes. But a pig is still a pig internally. And until we begin to change the heart, of mankind the outward appearance is nothing in the eyes of god so this is like a revival that produced outward change but does not fully remove the inward heart of corruption which characterizes the nation america is a corrupt nation and the people in it have taken on the characterization characterization characteristics of america and the corruption thereof so Zephaniah hammers home his message repeatedly that the day of the Lord, judgment day is coming when the malignancy of sin, not cancer, but sin, will be dealt with. Israel and her gen see God don't deal with cancer and diseases because he knows the sin in your life brings about the disease. If he can get you to conquer the sin in your life, then your healing is right behind that, according to the book of James, chapter 5, over around 13 through 17. Anybody in need of healing, there's a prayer of faith, okay? Your sickness and sin go hand in hand, according to the alleged half-brother of the Messiah, Mary's son, James, okay? So it goes on to say that um, Israel and her Gentile neighbors will soon experience the crushing hand of God's wrath. But after the chastising process is complete, 
Blessings will come in the persons of the Messiah, who will be the cause for praise and singing. Zephaniah, Y-A-H, means Yahweh hides or Yahweh has hidden in the Hebrew. Zephaniah was evidently born during the latter part of the reign of King Manasseh. His name may mean that he was hidden from Manasseh's atrocities. Manasseh was a horrible king, allegedly. The Greek and Latin title is Sophonias. So getting right into chapter 1, verse 1, let's read. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hizkiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. Two, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. Three, I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. Four, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the cherubim with the priests. Five. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malchan. Six. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, not inquired for him. 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. 8. And we have to go over to 18. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That's foreign apparel. Remember, if you don't have on the whole armor of God in these last days, you have on strange clothes. Foreign clothes. Verse 9. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold which filled their master's houses with violence and deceit. 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. 11. Howl, ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, The Lord do not do good, will not do good, neither will he do evil. Oh, Lord. 13. Therefore their good shall become a booty, Remember, a plunder, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them, inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. And I told you, we built mostly everything, and they are drinking and eating from the vineyards and from the wells and the wine presses and everything else. So, if we want this back, our obedience is what's going to do it. 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. 16. A day of, a, of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities 
and against the high towers. And we read the other day, when them trumpets blow, baby, it wasn't always a good thing, right? It's like, sound the alarm. Here come the wrath of God. 17, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood should be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung that's translated poop. 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Going right into chapter 2, verse 1, let's read, and we have to go over to 15. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's speaking to some people here, y'all. And I believe America. Two, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass of the shaft, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon the, um, you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Three, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. See, if the Lord really knows that you're out here seeking it, even in, your, even in the midst of our wicked nations, he will spare you. He will spare you. He will hide you from his anger. For, for Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. These, I know, Ishmael, Ishmaelites is Gaza, but these could be the Edomites here. Because the Bible is always talking about doing something to Eshkelon, Ashdod, Ekron. Five goes on to say, Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitants. Six, and the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. Seven, and the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Eshkelon. Shall they lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. See now, if the enemy knows this, he'll do everything to keep this from happening. He'll do everything from keep us from the land that God told us we can have and he'll do everything to keep us from God and this word so verse 8 goes on to say I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revivalings of the children of Ammon whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border 9 therefore as I live saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel Surely Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of the nettles and salt pits, and the perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. See, and it's about time for it to start happening, people. 10, and we have to go to verse 15. This shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. 11. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Come on now. Swell. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. 13. And he will stretch out his hands against the north and destroy Assyria. 
and will make Nineveh a desolation and a, and dry like a wilderness. 14. And flocks shall lie down in the midst of her, and all the beasts of the nations, both the cormorant and the bittern, shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows, desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. 15. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How would she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that possesses, that passes by her shall hiss and wag his hand. That ends the reading of chapter 2 of Zephaniah, going right into chapter 3, and we have 20 verses to go. Let's read. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. Mm. Two, she obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Three, her princes within her are roaring like lions. Her judges are even wolves. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. Four, her prophets are like light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. This does remind me of America. Because America does not claim God. Took God out of the public school, public sector. Does not even claim Christianity. Google it. And I told you, God has no religion anyway. So it goes on to say, verse 5, The just Lord is in the midst thereof, and he will do, he will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. 6. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passes by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. Seven, I said, surely thou will fear. Surely thou will fear me. Thou will receive instruction so their dwelling should not be cut off. Whosoever I punish them, Howsoever I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. See, even when God punishes us, some people wake up and continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. Verse 8, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. A lot of people are out here serving other gods who was created and is in covenant with the Most High God. Nine, for then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent, with one accord, one baptism, one blood, one spirit, right? The New Testament says. Ten, and we have to go over to 20, I believe. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. 11. And that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings. And I told you my testimony is I'm not ashamed. Wherein thou hast transgressed against me, for then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and, they, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. 12. 
<clears throat> excuse me. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. We may be that afflicted and and and, and, and um poor people in the midst of the twelve tribes. Thirteen, the remnant of Israel shall do no iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Fourteen, sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Fifteen, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. Thank you, Father God. I receive it. 16. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion. Let not thy hands be slack. We got to work. There's work to do, people. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. There is work to do, people. We have work to do. You know, idle hands is the devil's workshop. Idle mind is the devil's workshop. Idle time, idle anything is the devil's playground, okay? We got work to do. So 17 says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. This is the Lord doing this over you. Okay, so it goes on to say, verse 18, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. You don't think it's a burden for some of these prophets out here, and some of the messengers of God to come before the masses and deal with all the backlash, the repercussion, the judgment, the lies, the hypocrisy. Um, that goes along with getting the word of God out here. Um, it, it's crazy. It's a burden to some of us. That's why Christ said, He that is heavy laden and burdened, come unto me. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. We're going to get into that. So, um, 19 says, Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflicting, and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. So wherever I've been put to shame, even here on YouTube, because you, you would think that a person spitting all his knowledge, doing all these good deeds over here for the Lord and on behalf of people, that would no otherwise read this Bible. You think I'd be further along with subscriptions, with subscribers, right? Or at least made it to 1,000. But God is going to, you know, vindicate the shame, if any. Because I told you, my testimony is I'm not ashamed. Because Romans 8 and 1 says, Therefore now there is no condemnation or shame to anyone who is in Christ, living after the Spirit and not after the flesh. So, 20 goes on and say, At that time will I bring you again, even in that time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. And I say, Lord, please hurry up and turn back our captivity. Going right into the book of Haggai, we have, it looks like, two short chapters to go. Haggai basically, um, with Babylonian exile in the past, a newly returned group of Jews or Hebrews came back to the land. The work of rebuilding the temple can begin again. Oh, so it's like being Zephaniah changed the outward appearance of some people and their inward heart was still corrupt. Haggai is saying there's some people who return back with a pure heart. 
So the 16 year process is begun. The people have yet to finish the project for their personal affairs have interfered with God's business. Basically like the church and people today, personal interference always gets in the way of God's business except with Christ. He don't care how personal he was with people in this earth. He always said, I'm about my father's business. Why can't we be like that today, people? Why can't we get back to being about our father's business? All of us will see a greater change of mankind then, and we'll see things shift in this world. We'll see things shift again in this world. Because remember, there was a paradigm shift. What was good and acceptable in the eyes of God, what was right, what was right, what was right is right, what was wrong is wrong. That was a, there was a paradigm shift. Now, what was good and acceptable is wicked and evil that's being accepted. And what's wrong is right. And what's right is wrong in the eyes of the people of the world today, right? So let's continue. Haggai preaches a fiery series of sermonettes designed to stir up the nation to finish the temple. And that's probably encouragement. He calls the builders to renewed courage in the Lord, renewed holiness of life and renewed faith in God who controls the future. The etymology and meaning of Haggai is uncertain, but it is probably derived from a Hebrew word hag, meaning festival. So let's get our party on y'all. My birthday is Tuesday. We have been celebrating and enjoying my life, my blessed day of birth. Um, it is hashtag Libra Nation around here. If you guys want to donate to my cash app, hashtag Religion Link TV, um, donations are not required. But are greatly appreciated when accepted because all money is not good money. I don't take bribes. I don't sell out. You can't buy me or do anything with your money over here on this channel, okay? But if it's coming from, from a place of a good heart and purity, we do accept it, all right? Thank you so much in advance. And uh, not for nothing, just wish me happy birthday down in the comments. All right, thank you. Getting right into Haggai, because Haggai, Haggai, Haggai is really supposed to have a Y-A-H. It's the festivals of Yahweh. Thus, Haggai's name means festal or festive, possibly because he was born on the day of a major feast, such as tabernacles. Haggai's second message takes place during the feast, 2-1. We're going to read that. The title in the Septuagint, this is Greek again, is Agios, and the Vulgate, which is Latin, is the Agios. All right, so Haggai, Agai, because remember, this is a Hebrew Bible translated out Greek, right? So chapter 1, verse 1, let's read. In the second year of Darius the king, the sixth month in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shaatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of the host, saying, this people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Three, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, For it is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. Five, now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Six, you have so much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You're clothed, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Y'all can understand that, right? Seven, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 
Another verse says, consider your ways on your bed, right? Consider your ways, no matter where you are seated right now. Eight, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, said the Lord. This is the mountain of Jerusalem, I bet. Nine, ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. 10, and we have to go to 15. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. See, if we want the rain to pour down from heaven and the earth to yield her fruit, there's something we have to do, people. 11, and I call for a drought upon the land, a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. 12, then Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the son of Shaaltiel and Joshua the son of jo Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. And all you have to do is begin to listen to the word of God, and that's the real fear, the real reverence, the real honor. The real, okay, Lord, I'm listening now. I hear what thus saith the Lord. Obedience. 13. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. God is with you, people. He's not against you. You're more against God right now than he is against you. He's sitting in heaven rooting on you. But you got to put the work in. We all do. 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shaaltiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of the host, their God. 15, in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, and this is not the month of June, in the second year of Darius, the king. And we're going to end chapter one right there, guys. We're going to get right into chapter two. And we have 23 verses to go. So in the seventh month, which is not July, again, I told you, if you guys want to learn the Hebrew months, Prior to the Gregorian calendar, let me know and we'll do it, okay? In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, 2. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shaaltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? See, remember the first temple that was built by Solomon? This temple had been torn down, burned down, seized several times. Prior to 70 AD when King Titus and Tiberius went in the Roman Empire and his first hand, second right hand man and burned down Jerusalem in 70 AD after Christ. The temple has been attacked prior to that, okay? So it goes on to say, Who is left among you to see her first glory, to see the first temple? And how did you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison as, as nothing? A comparison of it as nothing? For yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saying the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jesedek, the high priest, 
and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, and work, people, we have to put in the work. God knows I've been working at this thing since 19, but never grow weary in well-doing, people. You get tired. You're going to mount up like wings of eagles. You're going to run, but you won't grow weary. You're going to walk, but you won't faint, okay? Five, according to the word that I covenanted, covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. God says, we've been through a lot since Egypt, but my spirit remains in you, people. Wake up. You deaf and dumb spirits, wake up from the spirit of slumber God put on you according to Romans 11 and 8. Wake up, not to the wood and the stone, but wake up to the spirit of God that is in you. Remember, he breathed in the nostrils of mankind, that is the ones created by Adam, the breath of life, his life. Wake up. Six, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once is it a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Seven, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house of glory, saith the Lord of hosts. I can't wait to see that day. If it hasn't already happened yet. Eight. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Nine. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Ten. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is not September, you guys. In the second year of Darius came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, 11, thus saith the Lord of hosts, ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, 12, if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread, or pottage, which is stew, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, no. What would you say here? This is a question. Three. Then Haggai said, if that is unclean by a dead body, touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Four, Fourteen. Then answered Haggai and said, so is this people and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. 15. And now, I pray you, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Check this out. 16, and we have to go to 23. Since those days were, when one came to a heap of 20 measures, there went but 10. When one came to a press fat for to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there went but 20. 17. I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hell and in all the labors of your hands. We've read that, I believe, in episode 216. Guys, just got to go in the playlist there or check my homepage and follow along. It says, yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. Remember, he sent plagues, he sent persecution, he sent oppression. He sent, let me just see if I can go back real quick and pick up where it was. Um, Where, 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 where was it? Hold on one second. It was famine. It was everything that the Lord sent amongst his people. Famine, drought, plagues, death, destruction. And nothing can force the people to their knees. Nothing could break these people. Even if God destroyed whole entire families, they still would not repent from their wicked ways. 
they would not turn back to God. 18. Consider now from this day and upward from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is not September, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. 19. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. Thank you, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I receive it, dear Lord. Verse 20. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, 21. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. 22, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of their kingdoms of the heathen, America, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brothers. Now you got to remember, the cavalry came into America strong. Yankee Doodle went to town. Yes, he did. Killing up everything, riding on ponies. And then when it was all said and done, the American bird, which was the turkey, got a, a feather plucked out of it and they stuck it in their head to say they conquered the indigenous tribe of Gad that was over here before Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 with the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria also bringing slaves over here. Ah, oh, people over here to be slaves, excuse me. Get what you're teaching in your history, people. So, it goes on to say, uh, da, 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 da. it goes on to say, I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. And the Romans rode in on horses in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Hence, this is why we are here today, okay? 23, it was all part of their Psalms 83 confederate, confederate conspiracy against us, okay? 23, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee a signet. For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Signet is like a sign, okay? So that ends the morning read, guys. I will catch you on the next upload live and or premiere. God bless you. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Again, this is episode 219. And when I come back, we're going to go right into the book of Zechariah, chapters 1 through 7. We have 18 through 14 to go. And then we have Malachi 1 through 4. And we'll be done with the Old Testament, okay? Going right into the book of Matthew. And that, that wars, that brings on 400 from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, it's alleged 450 years that God was silent with his people. So with that being said, shalom everybody. I appreciate you. I hope these teachings are helping you. They're definitely waking up my spirit, speaking to me. Share, like, click. Um, uh, you know, give me a click and a view. Give me a subscription. My birthday is Tuesday. If you want to support this channel, just give me a click and a view. Help me get to 1K. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a great day. You've been watching Religion Link TV. I am your host, Drew. We sip on spirituality over here. Why? Because my spiritual ears stay. God bless everybody. Peace.